Hey there, everyone. Oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna show me this again. This is Mogu Shadow from the Guys of the Games, back with some more. Gauntlet Dark Legacy! That's actually kinda weird, cause... Whoa, that was a weird like spike, cause, uh... I loaded this file earlier just to make sure it was all working still. Cause I wanted to test one thing. And it didn't show that message, so I guess it's just because I was playing for a while. So I just wanted to confirm that in this version of the game, there is no results music for the underworld because it always shows the cutscene and then just shows a loading screen with no music. I think in the PlayStation 1 version of this game there is. Because I looked into it basically just to just to confirm it. And basically what I was talking about with uh, this last area being its own world in the original game is true. But uh, basically the way it is is it's these three levels. And then the gates of the underworld is the fourth level of the world, and then you fight Scorn. You know, that, that's just how it is. And in this game, they basically separated, they like split it off into two different worlds. With just like the, you know, the gates of the underworld gauntlet into Scorn, and then the last three levels here, and then once you get the rune stone, you can fight the final boss. Uh, and other than that... Let's just get into it. What is this called? Is it the battlefield? You are now entering the battle trenches. I mean, this is the battle trenches, but like, I don't remember what this area is called. And yeah, of course, skeletons. So this area is essentially like the entrance of the tower, which is kind of a thing. Oh god, I didn't. I literally wasn't even. I didn't even. I specifically went out of my way to not spin kick because of that, but... Dude, can you let me spin kick? Holy cow! Can I... I'll just punch them forever and just not move. Jeez, man. Why do I have a feeling this is a bomb? It isn't a bomb. Okay. Good to know. Uh... Can I throw this over? Ooh. Kinda. Good enough, I guess. Oh, there's that guy. Oh, jeez. So a fun fact I actually learned while I was looking at like a speedrun that's given the other day. Something I didn't realize is that uh, the aggro range of generals in this game is actually influenced by your difficulty. So on easy mode, uh, they can bear they can't really they have like a tiny range of like sight basically. They can barely see you. And in hard, they're all much quicker to see you basically, which is actually kind of cool. I didn't know that, which makes sense because like I said, the difficulty in this game. Does a lot of things. I'm pretty sure everything's just faster in hard mode, rather than necessarily dealing more damage. So that's just cool to know, at least. Yeah, the the battlefield. The, it's not a very hard area, but it is. It's it's good fun, I should say. Like, you know, it's just simple. It's just a bunch of stuff. I mean, I don't know how, how else to put it. Oh shit! Holy crap. And of course, the the monster for this area is these, uh... Aw, oh crap. How ironic. I used that turbo and then I couldn't actually get the turbo thing. Uh, the, the, the tiny dudes for this area are skeleton dogs. Because of course, what else in a battlefield? And they make that this adorable little whine when you kick them. Just to really make you feel bad. But uh, they, they are already dead, technically. So, I mean, really? It's not that big a deal. If you can stomach that. <laughs> I mean, I, I always wonder that about games that actually have, like, stuff like this where, like, it's a, you can kill, like, a dog and it actually, like, whines. I wonder how much that affects people. It actually does tend to get me in a lot of games, too. Not so much in this game, because, like, you, even though the dogs show up, they're, like, they're pretty, like, I don't know. They're not quite doggy enough to make me care, I guess, if that's, if that's a way I can put it. Even though I know they're not real to begin with, I mean, I don't know. Regardless, and that, speaking of what I was talking about earlier, though, it does make sense, and because of that, why the gates of the underworld is like the hardest level in the game. Because in older versions of the game, it was actually the last level of the game. For the most part. I think in the PlayStation 1 version, it was actually like, there's like bonus, there's like bonus stuff after. It's like the the forest world, like 
showed up in the PlayStation 1 version as like a bonus world. Along some other stuff. The, the, there's some weird version stuff with uh, those ver weird version differences. Like there isn't like there isn't a definitive version of Gauntlet Legends. Because like each version has like different worlds in it. And even with this game, it's like because the the GameCube version is feels super unfinished, but the GameCube version also has an inventory system, which can be nice for some things, like because you can actually like hold stuff, you know. So that that can be nice if you if you like the being able to just like actually keep stuff and not just use it instantly, you know. I I grew up with the GameCube version, but uh, honestly, I've grown. In, you know, pretty fond of just the more arcadey experience of this version of just being able to just pick stuff up and just immediately use it. You know, it keeps things simple. You don't have to be fuffing about with an inventory, you know. And it's supposed to be a more arcadey game, so I think it's fine that way. Ah, oh, God. Okay, let's back this way slowly. Not you. God, hey! Sneak up on me. Ooh, super shot. Alright, watch this. Die. Oh, I just unlocked something. Super shot is very good, although sometimes I always forget that it's not quite as strong as you expect it to be. Oh, did I just pull something up that might have been considered useful? It's hard to tell. This area is a bit, uh... I don't know how to put it, like it's not quite as linear. You can break that one, but not this one. I think that's actually the way forward, because I think it, it's pretty much as soon as you walk up there is a general. Ow. That's kind of annoying. So let's check what's up this way. Yeah, because this is just some stuff. I think there's a death over here. That's that's ringing a bell for some reason. Nope. No death. I do love the background of this level. You you can't see it for most of it, but like we'll see it like near the end. You get a nice like good view, and like the background has like a nice like sense of depth to it. I guess is a good way to put it. I don't know. You, you, you learn to appreciate that like this game has like a ton of these levels and they all have their pretty their like a pretty good like distinct feel oh it's a golem right yeah wood golems I didn't even mention the, like the fact that the gates in the world has its own fire golem which is kind of cool because they they're basically they basically just show up at the end. This this guy the first one's like super just like just make him walk to the fire, which in a way it's kind of apt because they're wood golems. They're like wood const. They're like sort of like wood constructs, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah. Boo, boo. So, for most things, like, like this is based on time, right? So, like, not shooting doesn't do me any good. Like, it's just going to get used up anyways. Which, I don't know if I've even mentioned that. But, like, yeah. There's, like, two different states. Most of the weapons and stuff you pick up are time. But then, for certain things like Super Shot and the Hammer, it's actually based on, like, uses. Like, and you can stack by buying them in the shop and stuff. So, like, you can potentially, if you have a ton of money like I do, if you didn't particularly care about, you know, the actual level, you can just be, like, you can just go into the shop, buy, like, 50 hammers, and just blaze through a level, killing everything, just, uh, with basically no worries. And that's pretty much what I did. I wanted to test, when I was testing early, I wanted to test uh, if the Underworld had, a, like, a results screen if you went back after doing the Garm stuff, but, uh, nope. It always shows the cutscene. Hey, doggy, how's it going? So that's the way to go. You can also go up here. Ow. 
Well, I guess I need to do that, so. I can shrink. Oh, here's a good look at the background. Very much looks like a battlefield, let's say that. It's got all these trenches and stuff. And the fog, you know, really helps. Alright, we're shrinking. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Anything over here? Can't tell because of stupid emulator stuff, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Alright, we going. Wait, can you break this? Maybe you can, but, uh, I don't want to waste my time. Ah! Get him! Do do More poison meat, man. There's a lot of poison meat in this level. Yeah, it's kind of the annoying thing. I think I've mentioned this, but like, uh, monsters in the game, when they start their melee attack on you, you can't dodge it. Like, even if you walk away from them, as soon as they start doing a melee, right, they, you just get hit by it. Basically, that's just how it is. Let's just blast this. And open it up. How did you live? Man, they're tough. It's funny because this because there's there's no uh like strong monster for this world because I think technically these guys actually used to be the strong monster in a way. Or was it? I don't even remember. Trent the battle world is weird because of the fact that it's like I think different versions just treat it differently, I don't know. It's just one of those things, you know. And I, I've never played... I've, well, I've played Legends, but only for a very short amount of time. So, I'm not the... I mean, even on this game, I'm definitely not the encyclopedia thing guy person. Ow, meat! I accidentally walked to that meat and had to eat it. Which is kind of funny if you think about it. Oh, this is just a different path. So I didn't even need to unlock that gate, did I? You can get that chair, though. That's the other side of the trenches, yeah. There you go. It's a bit mazy, but I mean, it's... You know, it's trenches, so it's kind of supposed to be. Alright, let's just deal with you guys like that. Mmm, delicious cherry. Was that worth it? I unlocked a gate to get a cherry, and then I walked into the spike on the way out, so I didn't actually get anything out of it, but, uh, you know. Them's the brakes. It's funny, there's, like, a hole in here, and, like, you... But, like, you can just walk right through it. This looks kind of funky, but they don't really care. Oh, here's Mr. General. Let's just hit him. Wake up! Wake up! Yeah, he's basically just... I mean, he look, basically looks like a, like a centaur or whatever they're called. Is that the right name? I think that's what they're... I think that's the right word. He drops some delicious junk. Thanks, buddy. Coming in clutch with your delicious 10 gold. Ow! Who put that barrel there? I accidentally kicked it and it exploded, you know? I do like all the, like, random fireballs just flying. Like, it actually feels like they're mortaring you. Although, they, they, they have very good... They're very accurate because they pretty much always hit the same spots. And by pretty much, I mean they always hit the same spots, so... I think we're actually... Very, yeah, we're pretty close to the end of the level. Because as you can imagine, once you leave the trenches in the level called... Battle trenches, there's not much more to go. And this is just a bunch yeah, there's just a bunch of kamikaze dudes on the way up. They do hit you with another set of trenches, I think, yeah. Although there's not that much more to it, despite what it looks. They do uh, give you an anti-death here, which should be, you know, your sign that there's something's gonna happen. But uh, I forget where you actually need this. It might actually be to the right. By right, I mean like right this way. Ow. But they hit you with a bunch of archers and stuff over here, so it's like... Let me just break that. Throw that. 
He gets into another way. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. There's like a split path here. Oi, hit that! Jeez. Okay, what does this say? Sometimes the long way is the best way. Right, yeah. So you can unlock this, but if you actually walk down this way, uh, there's like an invisible trigger that closes that. So you, you can't get that invincibility by going down there. You have to go all the way around. So a bit of a sneaky one, because it's one of the few times I do something like this. So I'm going to do that. Basically, I'm going to pick up the anti-death, and we're just going to book it. Luckily, anti-deaths last a pretty long time. They're very generous, because, uh... Probably specifically because, like, they don't do much other than just kill death, so... And death only tends to show up every once in a while, so it wouldn't be... It'd be kind of silly to, like, specifically make it shorter. Anyways. The trick with death too is that like in the late levels like he gets real fast so he like outruns you so you have to get him stuck on something. Otherwise he's just like unsuckable as it were. Kind of hard to see at this angle. Alright let's go we invincible baby. Rock. Lobster. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, that's funny, it's like, oh man, look at this gold invincibility, but then, like, all the dudes along the way are dead already, so, like... Not much to do with it. Though it does at least let me do this. Like, yeah, I get punched, idiots. Boom. Do a spin kick and then break this barrel. Kabushka. Listen to the dogs go, ah woo! How much health do I actually need to get to Mag? I don't know what level I'm at. I wonder if I should bother leveling up to 99. It doesn't make that much of a difference, but you do get like a special message. And your character actually like, uh, changes once you get to 99, because you get like, a uh, there's like a universal change for any character that gets to 99. You, you get like a special effect. Oh yeah. Oh shit! Man, that melts them. They're so fast now. Look how fast this golem is. Remember when golems used to be slow? Hey, wow. Near the end, many soldiers will trade their lives for yours. Which is basically saying, yeah, a bunch of kamikazes. Look, like we haven't seen angel wings in fucking forever. Like, just thinking about it? Oh, fuck. Alright, there you go. Ah, woo. Angel wings are, are very good. I think I mentioned this all the way back in, like, the first episode, but they make you immune to the small enemies, too. So, like, the dogs can't hurt us while I'm floating. Because I guess they're too short or something. Kaboom. I could have killed those dogs. I mean, like, the trick with turbo, your turbo, is because it pierces, you should basically always be using it to kill generators if you can help it. Because, like, yeah, it's useful to do other stuff with it, but it's, like, generators are, like, the, 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 the kind of the, the big dog, as it were. If you're not getting rid of generators, then, like, you're just kind of sitting there shooting at them over and over again. Now that lowered some random thing. Oh, God, dogs. I was going, ah, woo, in, like, a weird voice. Now on the other side, we got the fire shield, which means, uh, yeah, we're just gonna run right through you all. Oh, hey, there was a switch there. I didn't even see it. I was just too, I was busy smashing shit. Whoops. Ah! Okay, I was wrong about the level being almost over. Now the level's almost over. Oh, nice random bad meat. 
Yeah, we get a nice look at it here, too. It's a nice background, and, like, there's just tons of fireballs everywhere. Like, they really make you think, like, man, this be a battlefield. Who'd have thought? Hey, bomb guy, stop throwing bombs at me. And there you go. Two more levels, and then the final boss. And yeah, it just goes back to the regular song. I guess they didn't want to make a new song for this area. Because uh, originally, I imagined that there would have been a unique song for this area, but that would have been just the... Well, I say unique. It would have been the Underworld song, I imagine. That would make sense. Where's, where's potions? Boom. I assume that's what it would be, but uh, I don't know. You might have heard the dog's tags jingling there because he's just sleeping here. Big cutie pie. Alright, here we go. Two more levels. Oh, I think our butterfly got upgraded. It's gold now. I didn't even notice. Ooh, the lag. Shaboom. And, oh, our bow is silver now. Nice. We got silver armor and stuff, too. I didn't even notice. Man, freaking archers decked out. Look at those silver spikes. Damn. For the fight towers. Who needs a bow when you can just stab dudes with your shoulders? Right, it's just immediately just take care of all that crap. Rapid fire, nice. Oh shit! Oh fuck. Well, well, you know. We got rapid fire. There's man, they're fast, but they just die in like two seconds now. And I know I'm shooting double fast, but still. Screw you. There's, uh, I'm pretty sure you want, like, you want to go down there to unlock some stuff, but I'm just gonna take advantage of the rapid fire while it's here to kill this stuff. There's a lot of generators up here that are just kind of getting away. Alright, I think that's everything. Alright. So, hit this switch. That lowers that for a potion. Which means that I can just do this. And invisibility up there you can kind of catch a glance at. And we're back again. Jeez, I barely get to play and then I've been... It's been like 10 minutes. And I'm probably going to get interrupted again in a couple... Well, I don't know how long, but I let the dog out. He'll, he'll want in eventually. So that'll be a thing. Uh, I guess here. Hey, that was a pretty good potion, actually. Nice. Did I... No, I don't need that. Uh, what was I even doing? <laughs> it's been long enough that I actually kind of forgot what's going on. There's a switch there. Oh, it raises this up. For, I guess, a TNT combo for some reason, if you really wanted to. So, so this. Ah, oh, there you go. There's invisibility. Do. Alright, um. Let's just, eh. And I'll just blast all these guys just because, like, just get rid of them. Wait, was that, uh, which way is that switch for? That goes forward, so yeah. That is the way to go. The funny thing is even death is affected by invisibility. It's like, you can turn invisible on death. If you activate death by invisible, he'll just kind of move around aimlessly like all the other monsters, which is kind of funny, actually. This build is useful for, like, dealing with the generators, although it is a little annoying because, like, especially at this point, monsters are so fast that it can be kind of hard to hit them when they're just moving around completely randomly instead of always moving towards you, you know what I mean? Oops, death awaits you on the next man. Yeah, I can see him. I didn't actually want to go down, though. Oi! Can you just, like, not do that? Alright, give me up here. Alright, tell you what. Uh, screw death. 
suffering like a tash. I went and threw a potion at him. Let's so you can break this. Gold. Nice. Alright, is there anything I didn't grab over here? I think... There, I mean, there might be a monster I left behind here, I think. Doesn't look like it, though. Alright, let's go. I, know, I, I should really get this from up here. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Take care of that. Because uh, I'm going to be walking for a bit. And this is a decently deep elevator. So I'll mostly get my turtle back. Well, not really, but... You know, what, whatever makes me feel better, right? So also this this interesting little like trench here, where it's like you can actually walk up and down here just on all the sides. I guess not all the sides, but like most of the sides. Anywhere where there isn't like an explicitly like thing blocking you, I guess. Like you can see, like they're coming down here to come get me. It's an interesting little area because it's basically it's tech. It, I mean, I guess. In a sense, it's not really much different from just a wide open area, but it's just a wide open area with a big slope, you know? It's just a big circle, in a sense. Oi! You! And you! Stop shooting arrows. Oop! There's just like random skulls on the floor. It's so metal! Alright, uh, there you go. What switch is that for? I actually don't... Oh, that's for death. The death thing here. That unlocks another switch, and then that unlocks this switch, which gives me a chest. Hooray! How useful is that going to be? Who, who knows? I guess we'll find out in a sec here. Anything to watch out for? Not really. Three-way shot's pretty good. Apple is also pretty good, although I don't need it. Alright, so let's pick up that three-way shot and book it up the lift. Three-way shot's great if you can get close. I mean, not close enough to punch, but close enough that, like, one monster could potentially get hit by all your shots, because all of a sudden... Like they, 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 like, they can't take three... They, you generally can't tank all that. You know what I mean? And sometimes because you have, like, drop, I, I'm actually kind of hitting an invisible wall, though, which is kind of funny. I mean, I guess that's useful. Whatever. What, did, what was back here? There was another chest. Various bits of gold and silver. I think that was only 100 gold, though. Raise this up, which then raises that up. Awoo! Screw you, dogs! Listen to them just slain dogs. The true villain of the game. Look at those guys shoot me from way over there. So here's the dealio. If you couldn't tell, that's a golem. And uh, for some unfathomable reason, they decide that you can just do that. I don't know why this is here. But for some reason, you're just allowed to, like, lower and raise the wall it's in. So, like, I don't, I don't like, I don't get why, why it's, 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 it's a very strange set piece. I guess there's a good way of putting it. Like I don't get it. You know what I mean? It's just weird. I totally forgot about that going, but yeah, I think it blocks stuff elsewhere. I forget. I I don't even remember. There, there's some weird stuff. I don't think these are super important right now, but later on there's some weird stuff. Did you find the egg and ham? Uh. Uh, 
there's the ham. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Just saw this. What is this supposed to be lowerable? That might be a multiplayer only thing. Cause remember this level is kind of funky in multiplayer too. There's like extra golems. But like not in the places you'd expect them to be. Uh There is a there there is a Pojo. But I honestly oh there it is. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> fortified towers, more like fortified interruptions. Oh, that's kind of funny. And you have the fire breath as Pojo. It basically like lets you keep using the turbo move, which is kind of hilarious in a way. Hey, brief immortality lies ahead, which I assume means uh, invincibility and vulnerability, as they actually, they actually call it. Which it's kind of a Basically means the same thing, but it's like it's a funner way to put it. It's, it's a fancier word. Ow! Fun fact about Pojo that we uh, I don't think we've even seen it yet because like either coincidentally have, have like successfully avoided it or whatnot. But uh, if Pojo eats chicken, it actually counts as poisoned meat. And I don't think that's come up because I've just coincidentally avoided any meat that might have shown up why I had Pojo. Pojo is pretty uncommon, so it's not super something you'll really see very much, but it is a fun little thing. Pojo is not rewarded for cannibalism. Apple. Uh, I guess I'll grab the key before I go back up. Alright, and I'm gonna guess invincibility. Yes. Yeah, get him. Don't use the potion, too. Why not? There's one right there. I mean, really. I think that switch I hit just lowered that down. I assume. There's a lot of switches in this level that just kind of happen and they don't really show you particularly because it's mostly just a bunch of like switches that are just ahead. Or whatever. This level's actually pretty short for the most part. Like we're already, I think we're already pretty much right at the end. I think. I mean, I might be wrong. Don't quote me, right? It's funny they give you this shield, but then like, like what is it using on? That tends to happen a lot with this shield for some reason. And it's not a very long lasting power, despite the fact that it's basically just one type of enemy has a harder time hurting you. Because, like, bombs will get reflected too, but if they explode, they can't reflect an explosion, you know what I mean? Hey, there's that gold we unlocked way, ways ago. This is when you finally get access to it. Boom. That's some decent amount of money right there. I think we're coming up to a fun little. Is it here or is it in the next level that this is? I think it's this level because I want to say that's the case. You may fight one or three before you reach the exit because yeah, they're not very coy about it, or I guess they are coy about it. Is whatever that means. There's a switch there, and. Uh, what that switch will do, I think, uh, here. I don't remember if that, it actually is that switch for that thing. I kind of want to not hit that switch just yet. Uh, let's, let's see. Oh my god, the dogs are un unending. Right, yeah, so they have these switches here, you can't dodge them. And, uh, yeah, when they say one or three, they mean golems. But, uh, you can wake these golems up, even though you don't necessarily, like, have to. You can wake them up through the thing, and then you get their stuff. Which is kind of funny. 
If this golem cage is up, then you're in for a tough fight. Yeah, well, guess what? Uh, here's my trick, as now I'm going to go back and hit the switch again. Again, but you know what I mean. That lowers that cage, and now we can avoid raising the other ones, if you want to. Uh, what's this? Junk. Delicious junk. And now that we've done that, because this cage is no longer down, or, you know what I mean, it's no longer up, uh, we can avoid automatically flipping these switches. Which means then now these golems can be killed for free. You don't necessarily even have to wake them up if you don't want to, but, like, uh, you know. Where's the third one? Wait, is there not three? Is that multiplayer only? That'd be weird. Oh, right! It raises a third one! There you go, they got me! I honestly didn't expect that. Got me with the tricks. Alright, get him though. That actually spooked me for a second. I totally forgot they raise one up just to like mess with you. Because you're sitting there thinking like, I thought there was supposed to be three. And then the third one just comes flying up. And like I think he like auto wakes up from the switch. So it's like you can't even like try to cheese him. Of course, they give you the game. The game has its own way of letting you cheese it. If I remember correctly, I think to the right here is uh, something special. Yeah, the last secret character. This, this world gets its own secret character. And yeah, but it's actually like pretty tricky because it's basically just this trench. And uh, it's n very much like non-linear and also there's dead ends. So it's very easy to just like get screwed. They are nice enough to give you a speed before you uh, enter. Like right at the start you get a speed. As the archer though who already basically has max speed it's not a big deal but uh, it's nice. But, uh, yeah, don't expect me to do this. If you beat this, you actually unlock, uh, I believe it's, it's, a, well, who, what exactly unlock is, uh, I don't know if you'd necessarily say what it is, but basically you unlock a playable version of Sumner, the, the magician guy, the mage guy, the sorcerer guy, who's chilling the, the hub, who's like the, the narrator of the game. You unlock a playable version of him. And he's basically just like a re he's basically like a reskin of the wizard, but he has like max stats in every category. So he has nine 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 everything. Which so as you can imagine, he's basically like the the character you unlock, and it's like well you, you know go buck wild you know. It's a pretty tricky secret too. Like if you have a map, it's not too bad because you can very easily just use a map and you know guide it out. But like. It very much, a lot of it looks the same, and it's like, I have no idea where to go. You know what I mean? Like, man. Uh... Oh, I actually found stuff? Jeez. I thought I was, like, running into a dead end. At least the music's good. I mean, I'm getting close. That's probably the last one you'd probably want to find. Yeah. Oh well. 22 out of 25 isn't bad. That's like the second hardest bone. Well, mm, it's the hardest if you're not using a map. If you're using a map, then it's not that bad because you can just look at it beforehand and know where to go. If, if you're using maps, then the Sky World is the hardest one because that one's like super like has weird depth perception stuff and it's auto an auto scroller so has a level. you have to actually play well but uh this one's just oh yeah i actually have max speed now nice 
All right, so let's buy a key, get back to full health, and we're good. Last level. A lot of stuff we got. Whoosh. And if you couldn't guess, the last level is the one that has the rune stone in it. You are now entering the infernal fortress. Also, the music for this level is like a dance party. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. So, uh, normally, the, the, it's kind of funny that you can see this. So, normally, if you've beaten the boss of the world. And but you haven't found the rune stones, then this thing shows up. And what this little like hot code meter is, it's essentially showing you like where like it tells you literally like it tells you like where the rune stone is, right? As you get close to the rune stone, it gets hotter. For some reason in the PS2 version though, uh, this shows up even at but like before you've even beaten this, because I guess because they don't want you to miss it, but like I, I think it's kinda almost kind of a shame because it's like it's not like the last rune. I think the last rune stone is one of the easier ones to find. I think it'd be better if, like, you if like you played the level once and then didn't find it, then you got the meter, because it's kind of silly to get on your first try. Because like, it kind of trivializes the actual like puzzle part of it, or I guess like the exploring part, as it were. I do love that the music for this level is like almost like a rave. For some reason, for you know, a level called the Infernal Fortress, it sure is a smoking song. Ah! That was oh god! I think, uh, even though I just did like a whole round, I think this is basically just ah. I think we can backtrack pretty quickly. Jesus! Hey, you wanna stop showing up? Jeez, man. Whatever, let's just go back. Freaking running forward and like everything just keeps showing up. I think, uh, yeah. Well, first of all, there's a switch. Oh, that's a multiplayer switch! Hey, look at that! Why? I don't know. Not very useful. It's like a slight shortcut, I guess. For all that's worth. But yeah, I think there's a, some stuff we went ahead and missed over here. And obviously we can see one guy shooting at us. Screw you. Yeah, that was like, that's like a whole roundabout path. Because I think that's literally the general we just saw is hanging out to over here. Let's just kill him. All right, give me your stuff. Delicious banana. I guess you actually can't go this way. Okay. But I, I want to say there's... The, I swear there's something here. This level is a bit... Uh, that might just be me, though. No, I mean, it surely it looks like there's something over there. Ow. Am I crazy? Maybe I am just crazy. Maybe it's just because I think this always happens to me. It's because the level's kind of built to where you kind of wrap around on yourself, but there's just like tiny little gaps in the path. It's like we can't actually go that way. Man, sometimes I swear I have interrupt me written on my forehead. All right, anyways, let's just head on back down the way we're supposed to go. I did a bunch of running back, and it's mostly for naught, but uh, you know, that it, it is what it is, you know. I was wondering, like, are you, like, is that, like, bloody water? Just water that's blaring red from the light? Or is it, like, lava? Probably not lava, because lava doesn't flow like that. But, you know, it's probably just water that's glowing. Anyways, let's head over here. Hey, remember those dudes we left behind earlier? Boom, they dead. Alright, I actually unlocked this little thing here. Totally forgot about that. Hey! Skeletons. Ugh! I'm not trying to keep punching you, but there's just they're just so easy to punch, you know? 
They're just so punchable, dudes. Holy cow. Oh my god, look at them. I shot a potion by accident because there's just so many. I don't like that. I love that there's just spikes underneath that elevator. That's so cute. Oh, hey. Uh, don't stab me. Can you... Is this nothing? Is this just like a funny little thing? I guess so. The camera even moves in a way that almost makes it look like there should be something up there, but no. Although it does kind of tell you that, like, yeah, you can walk on some boxes, so keep an eye out for that. Oh, this is a dead end, too, man. This is just dead end the level, huh? But hey, at least, at least we get to rave. Do, 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 Someone just walked into fire. Let's just do this. Oh, there was a guy up there. Oh, well. He's going to be mad for a while because he's not getting to me anytime soon. Well, I want to open that note, but unfortunately, the game's like, no, there's dudes over here. I bet you this note's just like, don't open this gate. Yeah, search below before spinning keys. Not that it really matters. I have eight keys, but like, you know. I mean, whatever. Let's let, let's let's humor the game, you know. And it unlocks the path. And it's basically just telling you, like, yeah, if, if I used the gate, then it would have done this. But uh, you know. Even this late in the game, I'm still trying to mess with you a little bit with the keys and stuff. But, like, it's not that big a deal. I mean, I don't know. I would have wasted, what, one key? Like, it's kind of tame for this game's standards. Considering there's one level that's, like, basically dedicated to gates that just waste your keys. Alright. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. I love this. There's a basketball net here, and there's actually like an announcer. Why? I don't know, but it's funny. They just made a basketball joke for some reason. They just really wanted to do that. Oh, invincibility. Nice. Potion. Nice. It's like a bloody basketball net, and they're using a head as a basketball. Just really goofy. I don't I don't know why they just, the, why they just randomly... The, this is just a joke they've make, been, they're making, but... It's a good joke. I think the announcer is what really sells it, you know? If it was just the basketball net, it's like, okay, whatever. You don't need to venture far to continue your journey. Basically just been telling you, yeah, you, you need to hit that secret wall. We're getting closer to the runestone too, it's getting warmer. So I think that means that, like, considering that he's saying to continue your journey, I assume that means that there's a path over here then. Ugh, the camera spinning is starting to make me a little sick. It spins a lot in this area for some reason. Man, with all those spikes on her, holy cow, the camera's freaking out. All these spikes on her, she looks badass while I'm invincible now. Just totally covered in spikes. Yeah. I, I wasn't even pressing A there. I was just holding the button. There's just so many dudes coming at me. Alright, anyways. Get out of the way. Bet you if I stand in the right spot, I can probably kill the dogs too. There you go. Doggo's gone. They shall never be able to go awoo again. Ugh. Uh, yeah. If I remember 
correctly, I believe there is a golem right over here. That sounds... I definitely remember there being golems at this spike pit. And I think you can even wake them up from up here. Boxes. This area is actually a little funky, because even though these things don't look too tall, they're actually like... They actually block arrows pretty well. Oh, I mean, that's very obviously a golem right there, huh? Alright, golem. Help me out here. Jeez, there's so many dudes, like, they can't even get at him. Dude, the golem can't even get to me. There's too many dudes in the way. Alright. I'm gonna step over here so I can get the golem. He was throwing bombs! Like, look at that! Look how, how high that blocks. Can I not get that? Well, then uh, I guess we're not cheesing this guy. I mean, I can do that, which will probably let me... Yeah, now I can him through the wall. Maybe I should go higher up. Kinda? This golem's actually really hard to cheese with that, so I guess I'll just bite the bullet and just pull him over here. There you go. I still can't cheese him. He's uncheesable. Well, I mean, I can. Now he's up here, now it's much easier. I don't want to melee the golem! Seriously, you bloodthirsty elf? Apple. Do, 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 do. Okay. And even with the turbo, it's not enough to break that generator. Oh, well, that'll help, though. Alright, dudes. Back off, Jack. Just shoot him for a couple minutes, and now we can go and do this. Ah! Ugh! Dude, stop slowly right hooking them. Sometimes, that's the one thing that's annoying about the combo system, honestly, is it's like sometimes, like, I just wanna. I just wanna punch stuff. And I wanna give them a cook. I wanna give them a kick and instead of them punching them extremely slowly. The path ahead is locked from the pit below. Alright. Good old time stop. It's very rare power, but man, is it strong. Because it is very much just exactly what it says it is. Also, Sumner's actually talking now to tell us that we're near the, the runestone, even though, like, you have the thing to show you. Like, man, they really want to make sure you don't miss it on a repeat playthrough. Find a very cool wall nearby. Your ultimate goal is in reach. And out of nowhere, teleporter. Uh, elevator's here. There you go. Because I believe the runestone's like right over here. It's like just go over here. Aha! <laughs> And then, unlike the other runestones, that one actually gets marked in your HUD, because it's like a special one. Which is kind of a nice detail. Uh, is there anything over here that I didn't grab? No. Let's just go. Yeah, he's just like, runestone is near. Like, yeah, I get it, dude. I can see the hot cold meter, man. I'm not a dummy. Alright. I swear I heard a dude walk in, in the stompy stomp earlier. So maybe a general somewhere? Ah! Alright. Oh! Yeah, I wasn't gonna be able to dodge that guy. I'm too busy punching people. <laughs> I was unable to move because I was too busy punching. It's a very video gamey thing to have a problem with. Well, I don't know if I necessarily call it a problem with, but it's a very video gamey thing to have 
And to be able to, like, say... I'm just gonna use a potion here. Felt right. And we're gonna do this. Boom. And they, they are relentless. I believe, thinking about it, since the uh, difficulty affects the radius of, like, generals being able to see, I bet you it affects the radius for, like, regular monsters, too. I bet you on easy, they probably tend to just wander around a lot. Until you get really close to them. Probably on hard, they're just, like, laser-focused on you most of the time. That definitely sounds like a thing the game would do. Yeah, but, you know, you know, say it with me, folks. I Don't quote me on that. Ah, I'm like, I'm pressing the combo button, and she's just continuing to punch. Jeez, man, sometimes. How much gold is the gold barrel? That's a thousand gold, damn. That's pretty good. I assume that the, the lift is the way up. The platform, the elevator. It's not an elevator, but basically what it is. I bet you you can like kind of like uh, just uh, you can probably squeeze into that wall if you try hard enough to unlock the gate from the side. Why would you want to? Uh... I don't know. It's one of those things that I love to do. I love to fuck with games like that. Ah, that was probably, that was probably an apple or something cool, wasn't it? Now I hear a dude walking around. Yeah, there he is. Who? I don't get what that sound is. Like the rest of the dog sounds are sounds like a dog, but then the get death leave is posting fortunate viewers. But then the who sounds like a dude just saying who? You know what I mean? Like it, it's just like weirdly like. I, I kind of like it for that reason, though, but it's like it's funny that it's so, like, weird. Yeah, 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 dogs biting. I forget where death is. I think it's somewhere around those gate, those, like, doors back there, but I want to deal with this first. Because there's a bunch of gates around here, so, like, it's better to just get everything out of the way so you're not worried about it, you know what I mean? Okay, where is he? Ah, oh, God! There you go. There's another one. Oh, well. Problem for another time. Oh, fuck! Alright, be right back. Yeah, for once, I can't even get mad because that was an interruption of my own accord. Where's that switch? There's like one switch and it starts like a chain. Ooh, Black Death, huh? I wonder if there's anything... Is there, uh, there, I don't think there's an anti-death around here. Like maybe there'd be one gate that'd be breakable just to fuck with you, but... Mm, nah. That looks pretty, like, concrete. I hit every door and nothing happened, so... Let's give him the old... Toss. There you go. Open that. Hey, amulet. And then we start a chain of just doors that get unlocked. Some doors have stuff in them, some don't. But, uh, for the most part, it's pretty concrete. And that opens this lever with a cherry on it. it. Opens up another door. Like, it's just door, door, door. Potion. And the last one has nothing in it because we're probably not in multiplayer. How humiliating. Who? Oh, a bucket of gold. Beyond the gate, the exit is sealed. I still love the bubbly sound of the, like some of the amulets. Like, man, it's so good. The sound design in this game is top-notch, for sure. 
Even if I like to make fun of some of the dog sounds and stuff, it's like, eh. I, I make fun because I love, you know? You know, as opposed to me making fun because I hate, you know? And the exit is unlocked. Hey! Th what do you know? That unlocks the way to the general. That's the last general we'll see in the whole game. What a run this has been, eh? This run ended this way it started, with interruptions every two seconds. Hey, look at that. I unlocked the gate from up top. I'm a genius. I'll let that one dog live, because I like him. I would, there's actually, like, a vent in this side here. I didn't even notice that. There's, like, slots and stuff. I wonder what this is actually supposed to be. Because aren't, th aren't these, like... Isn't this, like, wooden barricades? I, I guess that's not uncommon, though, now that I think about it. It's just not something I really think about. Alright. There you go. Last general's dead, just as easy as always. Honestly, all the mean generals are in the desert world because they that they, the desert world loves to ambush you. Ah, what what a better way to end this level in this world in this game by getting interrupted again. <laughs> so yeah, you can see this picture here, which is obviously supposed to be the citadel that you're going to in the next. That's the final. That's the boss fight. I want to say, uh, in the PlayStation and other version of the game, instead of this, it actually shows like the gates of the underworld. Because obviously it wouldn't make any sense to show a citadel that only exists in this version of the game. And by, you know, PS1 version, I basically mean Gauntlet Legends. So I think that the Infernal Fortress always leads to the gates of the underworld in every other version of the game. Alright, well, we have a ton of money and nothing else to spend it on, so I guess, like... Why not? Let's let's bite the bullet. Like you can't buy speed anymore because I have max. So I'm just literally gonna max out my strength. Yeah. Boom. Nine nine nine. We're a strong ass elf now. All right, here we go. The final the final fight. And it's gonna probably lag because it's gonna show a cutscene here. Congratulations, you have found a runestone. And it has the, 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 the poison face from the main menu. And it rises out of the blood water. You have found the 13th runestone. Go now and face God. Small detail, but I love the fact that, like, when he, he's talking there, he says, go now and face Garm, and it, like, it actually resumes the gameplay, like, as he says, and face Garm, which is, like, the only thing that happens. Usually, like, it sits around for a minute to, like, finish talking. It's a nice thing. It, like, lets you just start walking. I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I like that. All right, anyways, yeah, they just throw you right into it. This is Garm. He's it's basically just a giant statue. He's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, he, he's actually a very cool boss in terms of like the things you can do with him because he's one. Of, he's like the only other boss other than the Chimera who actually uses a lot of the mechanics that this version has. So you can you can destroy all his different body parts and stuff, and he also spawns monsters. He actually spawns really strong monsters. These guys are tough as shit. And he has a bunch of different attacks you can use. And, like I was saying, he uses the body part system. You can destroy individual body parts on him. You don't need to because he only has one health bar. But every attack he uses is like linked to a body part. So as you destroy body parts, he essentially loses attacks. The problem, of course, is that that's very as cool as that is. It also means that later on in the fight, when you destroy a lot of his parts... He kind of just doesn't have a lot he can do to you anymore, and he kind of just sits there and stares at you. 
They kind of try to stop that by having also like the, like he has like fire traps on his fight, but the fire traps are just kind of there to stop you from just hanging out in front of him, even though you can already kind of do that. So, also unlike other fights, there is no way to avoid his AOE attack. When he sends that wave at you, you take that hit, or you use turbo to avoid it, or you just block it. You know. Yeah, I just destroyed his arms, so now, uh, he's very limited in what he can do. So, like, yeah, the final boss fight, it's, it's one of those things where it's, like, it's very cool mechanically, but it is kind of a shame that it's, like... I also love, I didn't even mention that, yeah, I wondered what those was. Yeah, when you kill the wizard dudes, they actually spawn those tracking skulls at you. Ah! It's very hard to actually dodge the uh, laser attack. Oh jeez. And also, yeah, every time that's what actually spawns the wizards is... Wow, I just got comboed for like a th like 500 damage. But yeah, every time you destroy one of his body parts, it spawns the wizards. Ah, god. So it can actually be kind of scary. Like these guys are cool. They're like probably like the coolest part of the fight. I'm actually gonna use a potion on them. All right, avoid that. Ah. But yeah, like you can see, like at this point in the fight, he has like no attacks he can really do anymore, except eye lasers. So you can basically just like hold the button down and he just kind of can't do anything. I think if you stand right in front of him, he can't hit you either. So like, yeah, good GG. Cool fight, but like, yeah, like what, what like why? Like look at this, he literally can't do anything anymore. Like it's kind of silly. I'll just take the skulls. Block. Ow. Yeah, like, look, look, look at this. He can't do anything anymore. I'm just gonna, yeah, like, the skulls, like, whatever. Just take the hit. Cause you think there'd be fire all in front of him, so you couldn't do this, but no. Just shoot him till he dies. All in all, it's probably like the most anticlimactic thing in this otherwise great game. And his statue shatters, and you can see the dude just kind of pop out from it. He runs forward a bit, kind of melts in the power, and then he dies. Poor guy. And that's that. Congratulations. Garm has been destroyed, and his evil has been purged from the realms. And we get this sweet FMV. The evil wizard Garm has been destroyed. He will never again come the eight realms. Peace will again rule the kingdoms. Sweet taste of victory. Oh yeah, that's satisfying. And then after you beat Garm, oh well, well. First of all, there's my level. There you go. We get some final stats. That's how many enemies we killed, the generators destroyed, how much money we found, and how long the game took, which took just under 12 hours. If I was playing Final Fantasy IX, which you know I'll. I'll eventually, I'll eventually get back to that, but that would have been an Excalibur 2 run. And they don't even let you, like, quit out here, because they're like, nah, you get to watch the cutscene. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll save. Because I believe as soon as you click done... There you go, that's the credits. Steve Scat Caterson. Uh, I guess that's, this, is this the part you're supposed to give your final thoughts? Uh, 
I do like it's the weapons. Those are the weapons of the new characters, right? It's like the jester's stick and bomb, the knight's mace, the dwarf's hammer, and then the sorceress's wand. I do think it's a little weird how like the like the the dream one has the shows the four original heroes getting killed, but like this game has like this weird focus on the new ones, but like also not really because they don't really they show up in like the cutscene. Well, I don't even know. I shouldn't really say it's weird, because it just is it is what it is, you know, but, um... Wow, why did that speed up and just, like... Those credits felt short. Am I, am I crazy? Why did that... Huh. That's kind of funky. I don't remember the credits doing that. Is that some weird PS1 thing? I also just noticed that the, the text is actually putting a shadow on the back. You can see, like, Dar and see there but uh yeah uh my thoughts on this game uh i think it's a real fucking shame that not i don't hear anyone talking about this game this game is honestly like it isn't some super deep complex game but for just an arcadey rompy just beat em up or i don't even know what you call it, like an arcadey just run through kill stuff game it and just like you know occasionally you get little tiny puzzles and stuff and whatnot it's super fun it honestly is just a phenomenal game like the only complaint I can really make about this game is that it's just you have so much health after like the first world that like outside of like the gates of the underworld you're pretty much never ever anywhere anywhere close to dying there is no threat of dying anywhere but uh yeah we'll load this quickly and see our final stats you know there's our character should I bother leveling up to 999 or to 999 to 99 I don't think so. I guess we'll show off the other characters here quickly. Like, there's the Dwarf, the Knight, the Sorceress, Jester, Wizard, Valkyrie, and Warrior. And that's, that's the green versions. Uh, there's also the Minotaur, obviously. Because we, we this, we'll see the characters we unlock. Minotaur, the Falconess, which... The Falconess, I always thought it was like a weird design. Because it's just like, hey, check out these tits. But also eagle fucking or like falcon head. There's the tigress who honestly looks more like a squirrel to me than a tiger, but you know. Medusa, who actually looks pretty sick. She's the uh like unlock like secret like XP of the sorceress. And then the hyena, who actually also looks like the hyena is probably, like, the coolest looking one, because, like, he has the fucking, like, he's, like, like, he looks like he has rabies, you know? Like, look at the drool coming from him. Like, that's awesome. And, yeah, the, the, the unlockable characters just have basically, have, they're just, like, upgraded versions of the characters you can pick. The only thing that sucks about the, like, the beast characters, like, that's basically what they're called. They're, like, the beast within or whatever, is that, uh, they don't get upgraded as you play through the game, so, like, Medusa at level 1, for example. Green Medusa. So, like, green... Actually, let me let me go to yellow Medusa. They also don't tend to change as much with, the, like, changing their color. Like, some characters barely change at all. Like, the Minotaur just has, like, the loincloth and stuff. So they aren't as affected. And, like, yeah, like, as you level them up, they don't change in appearance like the other characters do. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for this game. Uh, I guess... Should I... I mean, I don't know. Oh, I, I, you know what? Since we're here, actually... I want to show one thing off before we finish. Uh, also show off this fun little glitch. So notice that I don't have max strength anymore. Uh, when you select a new character to play as, your stats... The game essentially forgets about the stats that you've bought in for any characters. You can only essentially buy stats for one character. I don't know if this is a glitch. I assume it is, but that's just how it is. Uh, so let me... It's actually pretty apt that we got the Tigress because she's probably the best character for this. So, uh, remember when I was talking about being able to walk through walls? The Tiger aspect obviously looks a lot more obvious when you actually play as the tigress because she actually looks like a tiger but uh 
20 eagle feathers to enter this, huh? Well, guess what? If you kind of just walk into this corner... You know, the message will pop up again to try to stop you, but as long as you kind of just hang out in this corner enough, I forget exactly how you have to walk into it, but you can obviously tell something's happening because it's like pushing us. Eventually, you can kind of get yourself in here. I forget how you do this. Uh, maybe if I just hold it for long enough, I forget. I haven't done this in forever. It's actually, like, I used to know exactly how to do this, because I, I actually, like, uh, dabbled in, like, trying to do speedruns of this game for a little while. Not, not like, serious speedruns, but, like, you you can use the turbo code, which I, I, I haven't even mentioned. But, like, yeah, there's, like, on the name entry screen, uh, you can enter, like, specific names to actually get, like, uh, whatchamacallit, like, you can essentially unlock... Or like have like one cheat code per character and one of them is like turbo which basically gives you unlimited turbo so you, you're always a purple bar and during multiplayer uh you can actually do team combo attacks with uh, like another player that like basically like lets you like do like a super move together that like in the, a bunch of characters have like unique combo moves and like the one that lets you cheat is if you have two dwarves, they can ride each other, and like when they drop, like when they finish riding each other, they like get off, and it actually like moves them in like a certain way. How the hell do you do this? Come on, let me through. I used to know how to do this, but I'm not very good apparently anymore. Uh, yeah, though, uh, the, the beast characters have the same sounds and stuff, they just look a little different, and they don't get upgraded, unfortunately, which kind of sucks, because especially, like, the Tigress just is basically dressed like a, like a, what, like a level 20 archer? Man, I can't, I do not remember how you do this. It, it's supposed to be to just walk into this in, like, a certain way, but I'm, I haven't done this in so long that, like, it doesn't really matter. Eh... Ah, oh, well. I think you can actually do it on the other side, too. I want to say, like, if I walk over here. It's like, oh, you need 12 golden snake claws. I think where you stand is a little different. Actually, maybe you can't clip through this one. For some reason, the, the collision for these is slightly different. I'm not sure why that's, why these are different from each other. Like, you think they just copy-pasted or whatever. I don't know if that really works like that, but... Uh... <laughs> I can't quite get there. It really looks like I sh if I just hold this direction for long enough. Because so it really looks like it kind of... Maybe this is it. I don't remember how you do this. Yes, I, I hate the message keeps popping up. Like, shut up, man. Ah, whatever. This is just bonus at this point. I'm just wasting your time. So let me see something. I'm gonna load my uh, one of my moshes. Do I have a 99 in here? I have a jackal. Look, check out that jackal stats, man. Well, I also have a jester. Uh, oops. Let me load some of these things. Like, do I have? No, there's no save slot there. Uh, let me see. Do I have any like different like 99s, or are these just separate saves? There's a sorceress. Another jester and jackal. The jackal's just low. So I think these are just separate saves. I do have Sumner unlocked. So you can see he's just immediately 999, right? Everything. We can see the characters I didn't get, like the unicorn. Unicorn looks badass, because he's like got an armored head. There's the ogre, which is the dwarfs. He looks very ogre-y. There's the jackal, obviously, which I I guess I didn't even talk about, but like yeah, there's the jackal. That's everyone. Uh, do I have any, like, I can load this. Do I have any 99 characters? I swore I had one. I guess not. Whoops. So I have this one where there's a save at the bottom. I think the reason why I have separate saves is so that uh, I can buy upgrades for one character and then I can just set up a save separately so I don't have to worry about losing the upgrades. But, uh, yeah. It looks like I don't have a thing. 
Uh, actually, I do want to show one last thing that I just thought of just now, which this will work because it involves quitting. But basically, when you're loaded into the game, you can quit from here. Just, just quit, quit game. And when you do that, <laughs> that dude just gets fucking killed. Rip some there. But yeah, thank you for joining me on this journey once again. And uh, I have no plans for what I'm going to do after this. So, you know, I, your guess is as good as mine. Anyways, yeah, see you guys later.